Hi, everybody. This is Deva Masal, and it's Friday evening. So on Friday evenings, we're going to be coping with how to cope with less money. And today, we've got a really fun broadcast for you, hopefully. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to make some early Christmas presents or Thanksgiving presents or gifts generally. But we're going to be doing it using blackboard paint. Now, it's really important that we understand that for some of us, just the very idea of having to buy presents um, sets up a lot of negative reaction. And, you know, if you would like to give me your comments about that, let me know. Um, you know, when you hear those words, and if you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching it on the replay, just leave comments below. When you think to yourself, I've got to come up with presents from, for my family or friends, what happens to you? Hi, Sharon and Jody. Um, what happens to you? What do you think about? Because part of coping is to make sure you understand what happens to you when you hear these words, all right? So the first thing that we do here in Dear Mama Sal is we get together three times a week. Hi, Beth. I got some questions for you today, Beth, so just hang on. Um, but the first thing that we do here at Dear Mama Sal is we talk about real life stuff. And we also support one another in coping with life on a day-to-day -day basis. And we do three broadcasts a week. We do one Friday lunchtime, which is our broadcast um, that deals with a skill. And today in our broadcast, I can't, you know, I'm sitting here going, what did we do at lunchtime, Jody? Um, <laughs> ah, it was so long ago. It was a good one. I've got to think about that. Isn't that terrible? Uh, hang on a second. Uh, or I've got to bring up a screen so I can see it. I'm so busy working on this one that I clean forgot what we did. Oh, feelings of, I know what it was. Um, feelings of, hmm, let me think about this. Yes, my, my um, getting lost. That was it. Thank you, Beth. Uh, for letting me know that it's looking a bit dark. I'll try and put some more light on for you. Uh, just hold on one second. <laughs> uh, it might be difficult until we get down to the uh, demonstration. I'm hoping that you can see this okay, Beth. That's going to be the important bit. I'm not so important. But it's uh, interesting to know. It's just getting dusky here, so that's... Um, probably what's happening. Yeah, so the, the whole discussion at lunchtime was, you know, how to cope with a feeling of loss. And I was giving a demonstration about what happened to me this week, and I was feeling really lost. So uh, I just wanted you all to know that we did that. So we do that at lunchtime as a skills one. Then we do the evening one on a Friday. On the Friday evening one, uh, we try and talk about how to cope with less money. And then get a few laughs in there as well. And then on Sundays afternoon at 3.30 Pacific, these are all Pacific times, um, Sunday afternoon, we do our Soul Sunday. And that's dealing with how do you cope um, with your serenity, I think I put it just as a general thing. How do you relax more? How do you let go of everything? Uh, a whole lot more. All right. So we do three completely different ones. So today's one is how do we going to cope with with less money? And my question now that I've got you all in the room is literally how, what happens to you when you think I've got to come up with some presents and I don't have the money? How many of you have negative um, feelings like that? What am I going to do? And, you know, I know Beth is busy saying you come to the Donald Donald. Dollar General, which is where she works. And, um, but you know, I want us to get really aware of what we think about. Because if we're aware of what we think about, then we can uh, make a difference. Yes, thank you for that honesty. Jody says, I feel like I'm, I will be judged. All right. In, in terms of what the quality of the present or whatever. Give, give me some more words around that, Jody, so I can make sure I understand exactly where you're at, as opposed to where I think you might be at. 
Does anybody else agree with Jody that part of the problem is you fear being judged? And if so, judged for what? And while we're getting the answers on that one, uh, if you have any other things that come up for you when you start talking about how to, you know, get presents for people when you haven't got very much money. Um, for those of you who might be watching, feel free to participate in the chit chat, but just know that the, the broadcast will continue to run on YouTube after the broadcast. The replay will be there. The comments won't, as long as I remember to dis um, disable them. <laughs> the comments won't be there, but my discussion will. So if you say anything on the chit chat and you don't want me to talk about it because you don't want it to be left on there, please make sure you just put a note and say, don't, don't talk about this cell or don't use my name. In other words, I might talk about the subject, but just don't use my name. All right, so Jody, yes, said that she says that she will be judged for how much money we spend. Uh, and was it exactly what that person likes or not? Sharon says, that's where my creativity starts flowing. I think of what each person would use and see if I can make it. I've had many Christmas like that. Yes, exactly. And that is the whole thing. So what I want you to think about is were your best Christmas presents the most expensive ones? I want you to get your head straight. And hi, Niasha, good to see you. Were your best Christmas presents the most expensive ones? Or were they the most thoughtful ones, the most caring ones, or the most practical ones? That's where I want you to get your head straight, because that's what we are going to be talking about on these Friday evenings. So when you're coping with a limited budget, you're going to need to start early. And that's why I'm going to start talking about it in August, right? Because you, you're going to probably have to make a lot of the presents or think this out very carefully with a limited budget. And so start doing it now. How many of you saying, yeah, I keep meaning to do that? <laughs> and the trick is do it. So Jody's saying it also brings up anxiety because very often I can't fulfill the gifts I'd like to give because of finances. Yeah. So what do you, so then... Jody, you're a smart cookie. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Jody is our admin. So, Jody, if you know that you cannot get what you want them to have, what do you need to let go of? Sharon says, you know, this is so typical. Yeah, you, you and I both, Sharon. Sharon says, I am a giver, so my finances are never enough. Do any of you, any other viewers feel that way? Um, I actually... Oh, Jody says, I have to let go of my pride. You don't have to, but it would certainly help you. So, so this is the point that I want to make, Jody. I want you to remember what a good present is. A good present is one that shows you care, right? Not how much money you spent. One that, hi, Lauren, one that shows you care. And so... What I'm going to do is to show you a variety of options you might have. And the other question that I wonder if any of you have thought about is, how many of you, when you hear about Christmas presents, say to yourself, I wish I had the time to make them? And by the way, it is also true that on some things, making them is more expensive than buying them. So think about that as well. Yes, just saying it's my niece's birthday is coming up and I can't give her an amount of money I wish due to my health expenses. Exactly. So let that go. And how old is your niece? I mean, she's one, not even one yet. Am I right? So that's not a present for your niece. That's a present for the parents, if you know what I mean. She's not going to know that you gave her this present. So therefore, make her something really simple, like a rag doll. I know that you can sew. Uh, I know that you can crochet. I know you can knit. I know you can do all sorts of things. So don't think about this one-year-old present. You know, get her something that she might probably keep forever. 
How many of you, as a one-year-old, got a teddy bear and you still have it in your life today? And, you know, it doesn't have to be a new one either, Nasha. All right, so let's, well, now we've sort of got our heads around the fact that it's not the expense of the gift that's important. It is the time, effort, and care that you put into a gift that's important. And by the way, if the amount you spend on a gift is important, <laughs> you don't need these people in your life because they're not living in a real world. So you understand, get, get your mind straight. She'll be two on her birthday. Is that true? Wow. Uh, it's, oh, your God boy, your God baby that's one. Okay, thanks for the idea. Yes, exactly, Nisha, that's what we're here for. Every single Friday, we're going to be talking more and more ideas, how to do this with a limited amount of money. All right, so now, first thing I'd recommend is write a list of the people you want to give Christmas to, Christmas presents to this Christmas. Uh, I have an ongoing spreadsheet. Do any of you have that? I literally just have to bring up the, the Christmas spreadsheet, put in the new year and add and delete people as necessary. <laughs> so that is a really easy way of doing it. And then I systematically go down the list and start working out what I want to um, give them. That helps me clear my mind. It helps me keep on track. And it also helps me keep it personal wherever I can. So the next thing, I'd like you to think about multiple things rather than single ones. Now, what you, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you will remember we did the vanilla extract. And yes, I keep going there and shaking it. <laughs> and, you know, we made it early because it needs 90 days to develop really well. And so now this is the whole thing which is, for those of you who might be listening to this and missed that broadcast, uh, we're going to be putting a note below here in the descriptions, because Jody will remind me about that, um, to give you the link to where we did that. So now, what I did, if you remember, was I made a whole lot of vanilla essence, extract rather, vanilla ec extract, so that I could give it to various people. All right, so I didn't make one, I made a batch of them. And I also know that that will last forever. So even if I have too many, I can hold on to them and give to new people in my life. Okay, think about that. So now that's why I'm saying if you happen to be um, doing what I'm about to do, you're going to be getting the paint out. You're going to be getting everything out to do two or three things at the same time. All right, two or three things at the same time is a lot smarter than just making one, right? Because you're already ready to make a mess. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put something down. By the way, Jody, I just had to show you my daily bread <laughs> that I won't be eating that much, obviously. But, you know, I'm getting really good at that now. Um, so the way that I cope with this overload is that the first thing I'm going to do is actually put down something to protect my worktop here. And I just uh, have got a big plastic bag. I buy giant plastic bags and use them as drop sheets. I don't know if any of you do that. Okay. One second. And I could cut it up if I needed to, but I don't need to. This will be just fine. So now I've got my worktop protected. And um, I want to ask Beth a number of questions. Beth, do you have things like this in your art supply section where it's just like a frame of, of balsa wood? Uh, because if so, I just wanted to say that I bought this at a, at a, yep, they do. Okay. Any idea roughly the price of it? At the Journal General? Because uh, I'm in Canada, so everything is, you know, the price differently and, and what I have, you might not have. So I want to check on that. So you understand it's sold as an art board. <laughs> Four or five bucks. Is that correct? Now, 
what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it while you're watching so you can see exactly what I do. I've never done it before. I'm going to turn this frame, this um, artist thing into a tray. <laughs> How many of you going, only sell? <laughs> you see, I looked at it and I went, you know, that would make a great tray. Now, uh, do you think five bucks is a nice amount of money to spend on somebody? And how are you going to personalize it? I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a chalkboard out of it. Now, bear with me. I'm just hoping that I've got all the right bits here. Okay, there we go. So... I'm just going to take some blackboard paint or chalk paint. Beth, I know that you also have this at Dollar General because I checked it and it's real cheap. <laughs> you know, I paid quite a lot of money for this. I didn't buy it uh, at a dollar store. I bought it at a regular store, but it's pretty thick stuff. So probably I need to water that down a little bit. Let's see. It will still work. This is really hard, people. I want you to see how difficult this is. How many of you are already going? I would never have thought of it. Okay. So I'm just going to get some more. Oh, not a good idea, which is why I protect my workshop. So again, it does not require great art skills. It just requires that you have some of this chalk paint and you use it. And we're talking dollar store prices if you want to, or you can get it, you know, at if you get stuff from Amazon, you can get it there. You just look for chalk or paint or chalk paint. And in fact, Jody, if you will remind me, I'll put up a link into where it is on Amazon for people. And then just a bit more here. I've had this, by the way, I've had this paint, as you can probably see, for some time. So uh, it lasts, you know, you don't need very much. And just every now and then I bring it out and make something with it. Okay, so again, not a perfect job here, but can you see I made an instant an instant blackboard. Now, how would I personalize it? I just need to put this away before I get it over my clothes or something. Um, the way I would personalize it is the color that I do the frame in. For example, I'm thinking about giving this to somebody that I know who's got the same sort of color scheme in their kitchen as I've got, all right? So guess what? When this is dry, I'm going to actually do a red frame on it. Why? Because her kitchen accents are all red as well. So now then, what could you use this for? I could put a couple of, you know, imagine this now has got a red uh, painting around it, you know, and on the back and everything. So I could personalize it on the back, you know, put it to the person so that whenever they use it, people can see it was specially made for them. I could personalize the colors. I'm really looking forward to this drying because I want to show you how many things you can use this for. Um, well, let's see how creative you can be. If you had this in your kitchen, oh, could I put, um, could I put a hanger on here so that you could hang it up if you wanted to? Or, you know, you could just lean it up against something in your kitchen. What would you use it for? Aha, a command strip, also available, you know, at your local dollar store, whatever it's called in your place. So that's another thing. All right, give me some more ideas. Set up coffee service on it. Yes, wouldn't that look pretty? Okay, I'm, but um, what would you use it for, though? Uh, I'm thinking 
Right. If you use a command strip, then no, no, you know, you might just put one with it. So if they wanted to hang it up, the command strip is already there. Great ideas. Yes, wouldn't that look beautiful with candles on it? If you imagine that, very good. What about uh, a shopping list thing? Uh, so the next thing that I would recommend you get to go with this is the thing that was right here until I started to do, here we go, uh, is a chalk pen. Now, I know that chalk pens are available uh, at the dollar stores and everything else or on Amazon, wherever, and we'll put up the link. But here is the thing. These are invaluable things for anybody. People don't know how much they need this until they get one. So this still isn't dry, so I can't draw on it yet. But can you imagine that you could just already write on there to do or shopping list? All right. And then just have the pen with it, with the command strip. Excellent thinking. Now, I saw something that I thought was incredibly clever. Think about this. What if you know that this person entertains a lot and... For example, you could actually put a couple of um, cheeses on here um, and literally, you know, buy a couple of cheeses and put it on and maybe some crackers. And then you give the whole thing. This would end, you know, and then wrap it in some plastic. What do you think? Good idea? You're right. Beth is saying put a magnet on it and hang it on the refrigerator for a shopping list. Yes. And by the way, get those good magnets, not the pathetic ones. Get the good ones. And um, what do the good ones look like? Hang on a second. Um, you know, these, these are the ones that I use on the Dear Mama Sal magnets. They are, they are incredible. They're, what, eighth of an inch thick? And I want to tell you, people say to me, boy, those really work. You know, you almost sort of have to work to get it off something. So a couple of those, good idea. So maybe put a couple of those in as well so that they can have that choice if they want it. Um, so now, um, Becca, I'll get to you in a second, honey. I'm just busy doing something else. And so, uh, but actually, it's great to hear that you got to hang out with a friend. So that's good. All right, so this is still drying. Now then, let's see how creative you all are. What else could you do with chalk paint? Let's see how many ideas you can come up with. I want to tell you that I didn't know how useful these were until I got them. And by the way, don't buy one, buy a set of them, because you're going to probably put one in with this present. You know, one in with this present. And as you know, yeah, this is chalk paint I just put on here. And this is a chalk pen. I'm going to demonstrate as soon as this is dry, but it's not dry yet. Um, but some of you are going to love this. Do you have any friends that like to cook? Uh, and maybe use mason jars? If so, how about buying some, uh, just the tops and then painting the tops so that they can, <laughs> Sharon's going, my mind's still stuck on this becoming a tea tray <laughs> with creamer and everything else, yeah. Um, All right, so Becca's saying, I'm not artsy at all. Seriously, Becca, how artsy did I have to be to do what I've just done? So, you know, if, if you're saying you couldn't do that, then hi, Bernie, it's good to see you. All right, you know that you could do that. Anybody can do that. That's why I made it simple. Anybody could paint, uh, get some of these, all right, and paint them and just, you know, maybe write on one of them, give the pen as well. Um, just the lids and the pen. I would actually give them one mason jar and then a bunch of lids so that they can see what it's about. All right? All right? Because if you just got the jar, the jar lids, it might be like, what, what? 
But if you saw this with, you know, with the writing on it, um, I think people, I mean, I've got them. I bought them. Uh, and I'm going, I'm going to be buying more of these and give them to my friends that I know use mason jars. And who doesn't need to use mason jar rather than plastic? Okay. And as I said, do it in combo with a pen. Wonderful. Can you come up with any other ideas? Okay, I've got all sorts of ones for you. <laughs> Hang on a second. What about if if your friends if your friends happen to entertain a lot, um, you know, buy them or get a couple of uh, wine glasses from the dollar store or wherever, and just paint the bottom. And give them a pen and just write on one of them so that they can see that when they give somebody a glass, they can just write their name on it. Good idea. Oh, and by the way, you can do that without painting it. So, didn't do that very well, but you can see I actually put my name on the glass. So, very simple idea. Beth, these are not more than about a buck, I think, uh, in any dollar store. So maybe a set of four and one of these. Just give the chalk pen. All right, now, Denise, I want to tell you, I use my chalk pen. I write on my mirrors. I write on my, I've got um, doors here with glass in them. I, I write reminder notes to myself all over the place. Uh, the, if you could see the mirror in my bathroom, I just, you have a chalk pen there and I write notes to myself there as well. Becca wants to know, what if you make a smudge while you're writing? Can you clean it off easily? Okay. So always good question to ask people. This is a chalk pen and I am going to use a blue cloth. Um, all you would need to do, Becca, is just get some a damp cloth of some sort and then wipe it off and try again. Was that easy enough for you? And by the way, on the glass, and you make a boo-boo, damp cloth. Wipe it off and do it again. Beth is saying, I used to find old picture frames from the thrift store and paint the frames with chalk paint. They turned out nice. Yes, they do. So just water will take it off. It's chalk paint, all right? All right, so uh, now then, what Sakura is saying that the ones that she has used they leave, in, they leave invisible writing after I erase them. Okay. What would cause that? You mean on your, oh, if I really look hard on my window. Yeah. You know what happens? Clean it a second time and maybe use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the window or whatever you've just written on. It'll be something in the makeup of it. So... You know, whatever you clean windows with, Windex or whatever, you know, use the same thing and it'll take it straight off. You know, if you've got really ugly looking shower doors, you know, you could use it. This is still drying. So, um, all right, anybody else got any other? Vinegar takes it off nicely. Thank you, Beth, our cleaning expert. We love it for it. So what I did is I bought a set of five, right? And in Canada, that cost me, and I didn't go cheap, um, cost me about 14 bucks. So I'm pretty sure that in the dollar store, they have them, um, maybe singles, but Beth will probably let us know roughly how much they are. You can get the multicolored, um, you can get thick ones or thin ones, all sorts of things. But I'm pretty sure that you will find that this gift people will say to you for a long time, I want to tell you, you cannot believe how much I use that gift you gave me. 
So we now know we can put it on wine glasses. We know we can put it on the lids of mason jars. Anybody else come up with any ideas? Um, you could go to the dollar store and buy yourself some frames, some cheap frames, take uh, the glass out and then paint the cardboard underneath and turn it into a mini one, maybe for a child or something. And you know that this is not gonna cause a problem. And you can actually even paint the back or put some Christmas paper at the back and then go. <laughs> Make sense? How would you personalize it? What's their favorite color? You know, if you've got somebody whose favorite color is purple, I would paint the, you know, buy some craft paint and paint it yellow. Or, yeah, purple. Um, do whatever. But how simple was that? Seriously. And you could actually put maybe, if you happen to have scrap paper, I'm thinking somebody like Lauren, who gets, you know, does a lot of work with scrapbooking and so forth. You could actually put different pieces of, of scrap board paper in there and just tell them they can keep changing it with the seasons. Yeah, Becca, I had a feeling you were the purple person. Yeah. So you understand you could have, you know, maybe Valentine's type paper, you know, if you happen to have that in your scrapbook collection and, and some autumn stuff. And so they can change it with the season. What do you think? Good idea. And then... Uh, Becca's going, oh, Lauren does scrapbooking. I do scrapbooking too. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that's what we all do as a family that gets together. We find out things about people. By the way, if you don't want to spend the money on the pens, <laughs> get chalk, people. Regular chalk. Uh, I might, might have to use this a bit just to get it going. Hang on a second. So this is like... This one's not going to start properly. You know what happens when they're new. Oops, I broke that. Maybe that'll help it. What is it today, 21st? So, you know, you can still write on it. You probably can't see it as well. Um, but you could use regular chalk as well. So just, I just love the chalk pens. They're so good. The other thing I was thinking about is um, you could make uh, beer mats for people. You can make your own chalk paint, yes. That's true, Beth. And I'm certain those of you who have that mind and really like to save money will um, check that out. I did see that, but I thought for most people, they wouldn't want to go that far. So I just wanted to show them what they could do and this really does go a long way. So this is still, I obviously had it really thick in places, but we're getting closer. So how about making some beer mats for people, all right? So that, you know, you can use them as place settings, right? This is where I want John to sit. So I'm going to paint a blue blackboard paint. I'm going to send some to my sister because she entertains a lot. Uh, even with the pandemic, she just has them all socially distanced. And I'm going to set her, send her a set and um, just so that she can write people's names on it and then you know, give her a pen. <laughs> and so she can tell it where it is. So that's another thought. Um, do you know anybody on your list of people who happen to be gardeners? Because if they're gardeners, uh, it would be a really good idea to maybe buy them a couple of, um, you know, flower pots and just literally put some blackboard paint on it or paint the whole thing with blackboard paint and then just write, um, you know, think of something, time or something, or maybe buy them one um, sprig of uh, one plant of time and put it in there with and, and put the word on there. Very simple ideas. Uh, you could 
for those of you who like mason jars and stuff, um, use mine for something. It's probably in the dishwasher. Hmm. Okay. Um, but you know those mason jars that you can get with a handle on them? You know, you could paint the whole of that and just distress it a little bit by rubbing it off a little in places and, and make some really beautiful um, mugs for people. So there are lots and lots of great ideas. Lots of them. It's only limited by your ability to search on Pinterest. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like... There are so many great ideas, and you understand that one bottle and a little bit of ingenuity, you, as Beth said, you know, you can buy secondhand frames, and you can buy some craft paint at your local dollar store, and you can really do so many, many things. Now, the other thing I wanted to say, for those of you who are feeling the budget, is... There are so many other things you can do as well. Um, I found that you can buy blackboard tape like this, and I use this a lot. Uh, how much did I pay for this? I trade, paid about 12 bucks for this. So there's my pen. Come on, people. I put it away. Um, so this is another idea where you can just... Um, Give them maybe the roll of tape and the pen. And so, you know, you can just write whatever you want to write um, on anything. All right? So really, I, I find this really useful to, I, I put the little strip of this in certain places. So, you know, if I'm in one room and I know I want to get this thing done, I will just, I, I've got little bits of tape. Uh, I've got little bits of tape like this and I just write on it and put it on things like, okay, do this, do this. I have got an even another idea. Do any of you have friends with children? And if so, um, you could do this or you could get really creative, really creative. <laughs> and buy them this. This is a whole roll of blackboard paper. Now, how many kids love to draw on walls? And my attitude is, what a great gift for children with a set of pens that are not gonna damage any walls. So now mommy and daddy can put this on a wall that they choose uh, or a door that they choose. And it comes, this one is, it comes as contact paper, right? And this one that I've got is, how big? It is eight feet by 17 and a bit inches. That's quite big, right? So, yes, I know uh, you also work at Donald, Donald General. So that's why I'm talking about you can do this stuff very simply. You just need to get creative here. Oh, Beth, really? I was saying, you know something, Beth? I said at the lunchtime broadcast, I have a feeling that today is a day that is something to do with Beth's grandchildren. It's Madison May was born at 3.08 today, and she was six pounds, seven ounces, and 18 and a half inches, and got all the fingers and toes, and everything's good. So, you know, that is awesome. And Jody will remind me if it's okay with you, we'll put up um, some congratulations for you after the broadcast, Beth. I am delighted to hear that. I had it in my list that. <laughs> you know, that there was, for some reason, this week, there was an event in your life, but I thought it was one of the other ones. I thought it was 
maybe Lily's birthday or, or somebody else. So that is absolutely awesome. All right, so how many of you are going, I could do with this myself? How many of you are thinking, I could do with putting this somewhere in my, maybe my utility place or stick it on my fridge or whatever? Um, so you wouldn't have to use the command hooks and everything. You just put this straight up. It is difficult to put up um, just from experience, like all contact paper, but it also comes off fairly easily. So that was pretty good. I paid about $17 for this at the regular place. So Beth and Becca, I'm not sure if you know how, do you have this? And if so, any idea how much it costs at the dollar store? or the Dollar General. So how many of you can see that this is a doable? All right. And we are getting quite close to this being dry. <laughs> so I, what I wanted to do is to put different things on it so you could see um, how great it was, but, um, you know, I was thinking about, you know, it would make a great breakfast tray, wouldn't it? Oh, let's put the down mug on there. All right, so how many of you can see it would make a great breakfast tray? And um, uh, my plates are either black or white, so let's put, let's put them back together just so you can see. Uh, you know, what do you think? So you could actually, you know, if you've got a bit more money to spend, you could actually buy a mug and, um, you know, put that with it. Right, Becca's saying she thinks the roll they sell at the Dollar, uh, Dollar General at about five bucks. And, you know, that's a heck of a nice present for a kid or even a lot of parents. I want to tell you, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of men that would want this in a workshop. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you could find all sorts of uses for this. It's a nice family gift, quite honestly, because there's so many different uses for it. I didn't start this until I got this. Once I started with this, I'm going, wow, that is amazing. And then I bought these, and I thought I could have painted that myself. Uh, hmm. So, and, you know, we were talking about maybe using it for, uh, let's see what sort of cheeses that I got, just so that I can show you what it would look like. just about, but never mind, you'll get the idea. So what happens if you have, um, you know, a couple of cheeses on here and then also some crackers, All right? So, you know, wouldn't that be wonderful, you know, if you had some brie cheese or something and some crackers, and that would be an unbelievably good gift. So what I'm thinking is you are going to find a 101 different things to do uh, if you just look uh, in either a second-hand store or in a dollar store of some sort or wherever. How many of you can see that you could buy? Um, I do this a lot. Hold on one second. Um, You know, if you happen to go to Home Depot and you want to get shoe boxes, don't get them in the shoe box section. Get them in the aisle that does um, closet organizers. You can get these for a buck each, all right? And you could literally put a label on there or paint it on there and then put, you know, what you've got in that little storage area. So to me, it's like... I am pretty certain that you could come up with a 
lot of different presents just using the blackboard pen. I hope that's helped some of you get some ideas. So <laughs> any comments, any chit chat that you want? Uh, is that for uh, Becca or for me, uh, Beth? Just so that I... Oh, okay, fine. That's what I thought. All right. So which of those ideas did you like the most? Let me ask you that. By the way, I checked out how much would it cost to buy this, uh, just a, a blackboard, all right? And I, I think even that's about four bucks if you bought it, if you didn't make it yourself. Now, the other thing that I haven't talked about um, is you could actually make uh, the labels themselves, you know what I mean? And maybe punch a hole in them um, by the, hang on a second, let me show you. Now, I bought these uh, in my local dollar store, and they were just a buck fifty for two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve label. Now, if you could get rid of the <laughs> one buck fifty, you know, cover that with some blackboard paint, um, you know, and put a pen with it, um, you know, nice gift, right? And I, with all due respect, um, you could even take it out of this wrapping and, and put it in a, a box. Now, that's another thing that I would recommend. Hold on one second. Um, if you're short on budget, start keeping any boxes now and start painting them, okay? So if you can imagine this box would hold all of those labels and the pen, okay? And if I painted it red for Christmas and put a ribbon around it, how nice a gift is that? Okay? So to me, this is about think smart. Um, I actually, every year, I can have a piece of cheese now, people. Every year, I allow myself a budget to go into my local store, uh, my local dollar store here, and I am amazed how many incredibly useful things I can buy, but I've got to look. And then I upcycle them, or I make a plan with them in some way, personalize them, do whatever. And I have managed to get some really great presents for people. Just... Be creative. So you understand, a piece of cheese on your cheese board, some crackers would look awesome. Mm. English cheese. I've got a thing about English cheese. All right, let me put this back. Mm. That first. So now then, let me see. What kind of snacking cheese do you prefer? Um, I probably use marble more than anything. But my snacking cheese in terms of good cheese would be uh, the British Red Leicester cheese. I love that. This is Lancashire. Um, 
but I also love green jeans, so but I you know don't buy that all the time. So <clears throat> my word to you is get creative, start soon, and a little time and effort. You know, you could even um you know, write the person's name in here. You could buy some stencil stuff and stencil their name. You know, just get some craft paint and some stencils and, and you know, or draw a pretty pattern around it. Some of you are very creative. And even if you're not, you know, just literally paint their favorite color around the outside and they will be very happy. So... Hope that's helped some of you. I should never have pulled that. <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. um, Beck is saying the Americans are so boring with their cheeses. It's like either cheddar, mozzarella, or yellow. I disagree. Um, it depends who. I have found some of the most incredibly good cheeses. Whenever I used to go down to Benji and Judy's, um, I know that I could go and open up their fridge and he'd have an assortment of about 10 different cheeses for me every time I went. And, you know, he'd have everything, the English cheeses, the Dutch cheeses, you know, I, I really quite like Edam and Gouda cheeses from the, the smoked cheeses from uh, Holland. Uh, you know, it just always used to crack me up that he knew I love cheese. My snack preference is some cheese. Yeah. So it's I don't I don't think that they're boring at all. No, the average Joe, I think that's very, very, um, I don't like to put people in big boxes like that. I don't think there is such a thing. Yeah, you see, you, are you an average Joe? Again, you know, it's the thing that I want to explain is that it's what you grew up eating. You know, if you were in a household where you had an assortment of cheeses, in your fridge, you would learn to enjoy different cheeses. If you grew up in a household where the only cheese was cheddar, that's the only cheese, right, that you're going to eat. Why? It's the only cheese you grew up on. Right. Beth likes to dip her cheese in hot sauce. How many of you are going, wow? <laughs> How about that one? You know what I love? I love um, goat cheese, chef cheese, uh, covered with uh, red pepper jelly. Now, I am doing an experiment at the moment. Oh, that's where that jar is that I've been looking for. Um, I'm just making my own cheese at the moment. And I'm not sure if it's ready yet. I need to wash my hands. So, um, but this is cheese I just made from yogurt. And what I wanted to show you, and maybe I can still do it. Let me just clear the decks a bit here. Um, Very simple as well. All right, so all I did, and I, I have to tell you it was this simple, is I. this is called a nut bag. If you haven't got one, it's a really nice thing, very useful to have. And what I did is I put some yogurt in the nut bag and left it for three days, okay? And all the liquid has been dropping out of it. And as you can see, this actually filled up quite high and I emptied it and then put it back again. I'm not quite sure if it's um, dry enough yet. We'll see. <laughs> so clever. Uh, 
love it. So now, just so you can see this, remember how I was going to clean this up first? Yeah, not so much. Hold on. By the way, I collect boxes like this all year just so I can paint them at Christmas, and it saves me a fortune on wrapping paper. All right, let's see what I can do here. Now, something tells me that I would need two things. Next, I would need, I'm just going to do this because I can, <laughs> just for the fun of. Going to start off by it's a little runny still, but it's good enough. I, I certainly will enjoy it. Um, let's taste it, see what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to huck some cinnamon on there, and I'm going to put some cranberries around it, and. I'm thinking Thanksgiving, people. Can you see this, I hope? And literally, it was some regular, uh, actually not regular, it was Greek cheese, now that I think about it, you know, the um, thicker one. Now, I've got to ask you, imagine it had more cranberries. Nice, easy thing to take to a um, you know, if you are going to a barbecue or something, and to be able to say, oh, I just whipped that up myself. <laughs> so there you go by the way it's so good I shouldn't do this should I but I'm going to that is definitely a do over now Jody. I know you said that you have done this, so um, you did yours with herbs. Mm. That is really good, people. Did nothing. Just let it sit in the fridge for three days. Scallions, thyme, and parsley. Yeah, I mean, that's Jody, right? She's the good one. So I want to tell you, I could finish this all off, and I probably will, just while I talk to you. Probably isn't that the healthy for me. Okay. So, <laughs> Seriously, how difficult was that? Let's get creative. What else could we throw on top? Jody, any other ideas? I really recommend the cranberry, cranberries and cinnamon, though. Did you notice I didn't measure? I just tucked it in there. I thought I'd have a look to see. We've been talking about how to make presents on a budget, and I thought some of you might like to know. Mm. Oh, that sounds so good. Jody's suggesting pecans and honey. I can't believe I did this. I'm going 
going to take, I'm going to make this and take it to, um, we've got another community gathering on Wednesday. Mmm. I can't put it away. <laughs> Want to. I'm getting to. Um, yeah, saying, how about sun diet, dried tomatoes, and whatever? What could you put with sun dried, dried tomatoes? Any candied nut, yes, an apricot jam, yeah. So, a thousand and one easy things to do. Um, just with some Greek yogurt. Basil, or basil, as they say in England, and sun-dried tomatoes. And by the way, for those of you who've been following um, the life of Tommy, the tomato, I did go and take a picture for you today, because I know some of you like to keep up to date on his progress. And I went out after the rainstorm. He had a big rainstorm here. And he is still in the flower stage. Move. Turn around a bit quick. Not that way. Hang on a second. Okay. So you still got flowers on him as you can see, but uh, I would think if we get some nice sun, he's going to have tomatoes on him very soon. But boy, it's taken a long time, hasn't it? You know I want some more of that cheese. Don't you? I think to drizzle honey on there with some, any sort of crushed nuts would be really tasty. And some crackers, right? What a great idea. So just be very careful, is what I'm going to say, that when you make it, make sure um, that you're as hygienic as possible when you're making it. And make sure that the, the bag is good and clean. Make sure that the uh, container you put it in is good and clean and everything like that, because you're leaving it alone for three days. So you don't want any bad stuff in there. Okay, let's run away. Um, oh, fig jam, caramelized onion. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, wouldn't that be good? Some, some of my, you know, I did those dehydrated tomatoes. I could mix that in with it. That would be very tasty. And some of those onions. Oh, you see. <laughs> so again, is that a simple gift to make? And if you actually put it in a container that is reusable, again, probably pick it up at the dollar store and um, put a little label on it that goes homemade cheese, you know, from so-and-so, it says that you care, right? And that's really what we're trying to do here. It's not how much money you spend, did you care? And it takes three days to make. So you could buy, you know, a big bag or, you know, we get our um, yogurt in bags if we want it. Um, but, you know, close to Christmas, I'm going to buy a bag and another bag and and just make um some and and give it to people and you know again start saving don't throw away your jars or anything because you know put it in a jar that is reusable after they've finished it hope that makes sense i, I found out that one christmas david beckham <laughs> who we know is not short of a few but he broke the bank in 2005 and reportedly he gave Victoria 
multiple gifts under the tree. Um, apparently, he first gave her a hundred thousand dollar diamond encrusted handbag no, you know, as a starter. <laughs> now, I want you to imagine that somebody gave you a hundred thousand dollar handbag. Um, do you think that you'd think, well, that's enough? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it was David Beckham. Um, he then followed it up with half a million dollars worth of a Rolls Royce Phantom. <laughs> and inside the Rolls Royce, you could have listened to this, inside the Rolls Royce, there was a $2.4 million diamond and ruby necklace. <laughs> Somebody's going, I can hear, how many of you are going, give me that problem? <laughs> That's amazing. And now, I'm certain some of you are going, what a waste of money. You know, that could, you know, feed half a nation in, in, in Africa or something. Now, I wanted to give kudos for a second yeah, yeah, and Jody's saying, yeah, so they had a light Christmas that year, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wanted to give a, a heads up and congratulations to Jody. And I want to show you what happened to Jody this week so that you understand um, what happens. First of all, if I told you that Jody is in the next week, in, over the weekend, going to have... Um, a new oven in her house and a new freezer. How many of you are going, I'd love to have that sort of money? All right? <laughs> Sharon's going, what was Beckham guilty of that he gave her those presents? <laughs> I like that. All right, so here's the thing. So an oven and a freezer. Okay, and the reason I want to talk about this is I want you to understand how difficult this was for Jody. Jody, how many months did you save up so you could buy the freezer? I know we were talking about it in March. So had you already planned to get it before March? Is what I want to know. Three months. So for three months, she worked on getting enough money for the freezer. Okay. Now then, the oven, she managed to find secondhand, beautiful glass top, everything. Um, she managed to find it, uh, you know, in her local buy and sell type ads. And she not only got it, hum, uh, did you have to pay for it, Jody? I've got a feeling you did, but they liked your story so much they knocked the price down for you. Is that correct? So I want you all to get your mind straight about this reality. There are going to be a lot of people who are in need of money coming up any minute now. Okay? Stimulus checks are going to stop. And people are going to start really feeling the push, and maybe you will too. That's interesting. Jody's saying that that almost new-looking oven she's got cost her 150 bucks, and it retails for 1500 And it looks like it hasn't got a scratch on it, Jody. It looked really beautiful. So you understand that some sharp, smart shopping now is going to bring you a lot of return if you have the availability to do it. And what I'm going to be doing is um, during the coming weeks, I'm going to challenge you with different things. But here's what happened with Jody in that oven. So first of all, she knew she wanted it because she's had this gap in her kitchen for how many months, Jody? You've been living without an oven. And then she saw it. So you can imagine if this is her normal um, mindset, she suddenly found this oven available for 150 bucks. So can you imagine that her excitement went way up? Right? 
She had been scouring the local markets for four months to find this, sorry. So you can imagine she went so excited. And then she noted something. And she, sorry, five months without a range. That's how long she's been waiting. So she was up here in heaven uh, with the idea that she found this oven. And I think you can all relate to that. And then she noticed that it said it was 31.5 inches wide. And she's going, no, wait a minute. I did the stats on that thing. I did the specs and the specs said it was a 30 inch ra range, not 31.5. And guess what? The space she's got cannot take 31.5, but it can take 30. So can you imagine that she now suddenly is down here because the good deal that she managed to find suddenly disappeared in front of her. And the incredible thing was she didn't panic. She regrouped and said, uh, let me do a bit more research, started checking the specs again and found out if I can just draw the oven like this, if this is her oven, um, that it had little flanges at the top so things don't fall down that hole between the oven and the, uh, let me show you here. Um, I actually use that space on my oven. I, I store, store my knives on that sort of little bit of space between the oven and the countertop. And so, but what she found out was it was these two flanges that were causing the extra size. <laughs> Jody's saying, I nearly took an X to the countertops. Yep. Um, and, and I understand that feeling. I, you know, my heart bled for you that day. But, you know, she didn't panic. She just did some more research and double-checked and had the owner of the oven just remeasure it from under the flanges. And guess what? Everything was fine. So she's back up here again, and it arrives this weekend. But the other thing, and that's why I wanted to give her a really big heads up and, and congratulations, was that she had already let it go in her mind, if necessary, and moving on to the next one. And that is what I wanted to give her kudos for. You know, she didn't hang on to, it's not fair, and da da and why didn't, uh, you know, no, she just went, okay, it wasn't meant to be, let me move on. And then she found out it was meant to be. Um, so again, keeping that mental control, right? Knowing that if it was wrong, there's nothing she could do to change it. Getting angry wasn't going to change it. Being frustrated wasn't going to change it. You know, it's dealing with the facts is what saved her. How many people would have given up and not rechecked the facts? Way to go, Jody. I am so proud of you. You know, deal in facts and you'll be amazed what happens, right? Let go of the emotional stuff. And just go, just before I let it go, let me just ask you, could you double check for me and find out exactly how wide that is? Because the space I have is 30 inches, you know, and a, and a half probably. <laughs> and it needs to fit in there. So if it's 31.5, it's not going to fit in. And listen to this. The reason that Jody did that was so that the next customer would know the truth. They wouldn't get caught like she did. Isn't that typically Jody? So congratulations, Jody. Well done. I'm very proud of you. Um, I also wanted to give a big round of applause to Bernice, who even though she has been dealing with the death of her father last week, um, still did the do it challenge, a do it day challenge, and sent me before and after pictures. So, Bernice, I don't know how you got your head around all of that and did that, but I want to tell you that tells me a lot, all right? You have learned a lot and you are managing. I'm certain you're still going in and out of waves of grief, but you are managing to get on with your life. And that, to me, is so incredibly wonderful. So, love it. And thank you for the before and after pictures. You've got to be one of the few people I know that's got the courage to send that to me. And, you know, because of you doing that, you have also helped me, Bernice, and I know that you know that. Um, right, she said, 
I'm just doing it because my hubby needed it. And I promised. Well, I'm sure he was more than capable of doing it if you if he if needs be. But good for you for doing it anyway. I was really impressed. Um, how many of you would have had the excuse, well, I'm really sorry, but you know, my daddy died and my, my head's not in the right place. No, not Bernice. She did it anyway. You see, when you want to get control, when you want to do something, you always will. And if you don't want to do something, you'll always have the excuse. And by the way, that roller coaster thing of Jody's, how many of you have been on that roller coaster where one minute you're way up here and the next minute you're plunging down? It's not a nice place to be, is it? But you also understand that getting angry about it wasn't going to help her anyway. So I was really, really impressed. Um, just to recap on the birthdays, as I, it was uh, Lauren's on the 17th, Lionel's on the 19th. It's Lolo's birthday, for those of you who know Lolo. It's her birthday tomorrow. And uh, Beth's on the 26th, I believe, and mine, of course, on the 30th. So it's a big birthday month. Yeah, Bernice is saying Papa comes in and out of my head, and that frustrates me. So I need the outlet. That's a good use of that energy. Well done. And she's also saying, I'm in that roller coaster, and I still need to figure out that quashing the anger part. Yes. Well, here's, here's what I would recommend, Bernice, because you're a long way along this path, all right? And the, the long way along this path tells me that you can sit there and just start getting real with yourself and go, does anger help me at all? Does it change anything that happened? Does it bring Papa back? Does it uh, give me that last conversation that I wanted to have with him that I didn't? Getting angry doesn't do any of those things. Okay, Sakura. And that's the conversation I would recommend you have with yourself and go, yeah, you need to let, you need to vent it. That's good. And by the way, if you need to vent it to me, go right ahead, write to me and let me know your anger. That's fine. It, there's nothing wrong with the emotion. You do know that. All right. It's just understand it's not going to change anything. And Jody, in all her wonderful honesty, is saying, I admit that I cried for 10 minutes. And then I needed to resolve the discrepancy without emotion. Yeah. Took her 10 minutes of feeling sorry for herself and disappointment. And then she said, now let me get it right for the next person. You see, dealing with facts will take you out of the emotion. Now, this next one I love. Aaron Spelling, the producer, once had a snow machine delivered um, a tons of fake snow, reportedly about $2 million worth, to their home in Beverly Hills so his young daughter, Tori, and her brother could have their own winter wonderland. The best part, Tori loved it so much that she did the same thing for her own children. That's an amazing story. And again, you know, you could feed, you could feed a third world nation with, with that money, but uh, they had the money and they're entitled to spend it. So I just thought that was incredible. <laughs> $2 million on fake snow that was going to be, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to clean that up? <laughs> Probably cost that amount again just to clean it all up. I also wanted to give a, a big uh, congratulations to Lauren because Lauren has had the most difficult week. Now, all of you, in case you've forgotten, would remember that Lauren is um, wheelchair bound. So mobility to her is difficult. Um, she has a sister that uh, she needed to look after because her mother was rushed to hospital and not just overnight. Uh, how long was she in hospital, Lauren? I don't know if you're still here, but I think it was quite quite a while. So the truth is that that's very difficult for Lauren when she herself needs help, all right? But she stayed calm for the most part 
and looked after her sister for the time that her mother was in hospital. Now, the next thing is that she heard words from the doctors like MRI and spinal fusion. And I'd like to ask you, when you hear those words, you know, what happens to you in your mind? Does that make you happy? Does it make you worried? Does it make you sad? What happens to you when you hear about somebody needing an MRI or that they may need to have spinal fusion? That's when they you know, literally fuse two of your spine together. And I want you to understand that imagine it if you were somebody that depended on your mother for a great deal of things. You know, what sort of a roller coaster does that become? And so I'm pretty sure that most of us would feel very anxious about hearing that. And, you know, the most incredible thing, and the reason I want to give, you know, a round of applause to Lauren is even though that was going on in her life, she was focusing every day on letting Jody and I know how well she slept. Seriously, every day she sent us, you know, she, she wears a, a watch that tells her, and every day when she woke up, she let us see the picture of how well she slept. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I might have let that go. But you see, somewhere in Lauren, she knows that being anxious, being angry, being frustrated um, is not going to help her mom at all. Getting a good night's sleep is going to help her cope better with her sister and therefore will be of help to her mother. You see, she's actually got this around the right way. And so I was very, very impressed with her growth. When I think about the Laura and I first met, and I thought, wow, isn't that amazing? And for those of you who missed the lunchtime broadcast, I actually told a story about my meltdown this week. And, you know, it's very important to know that we all have these moments, and it's okay. It's okay to have emotion. The thing that I'm interested in is, do you know how to get out of them in a hurry? And if you do, then you've done the work. So I just thought it was wonderful because getting enough sleep was probably the best thing that she could do for her family. And I thought that was amazing. All right. Now, this one I was interested in as well. Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z. <laughs> may have 99 problems, uh, but his Bugatti is not one of them. A Bugatti, by the way, um, uh, I'll talk in a minute. Anyway, so in the 2010, uh, Beyonce gifted her man the world's fastest car, and it is worth two million big ones for his December birthday. Um, but spending this amount of dough is nothing for the superstar couple. Jay-Z rang in the holiday cheer by buying her $350,000 worth of purses. <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> they don't live in our world, right? <laughs> well, okay, Jody is saying, and kudos to Sal for using her own struggles this week as an example to teach us to make our lives easier to navigate. Well, I'm glad that you saw it that way. And, you know, it's really interesting because in telling the story, I came up with the answer. Um, you know, I literally finished the broadcast and immediately started to document some ideas that had come to me because I find that when I talk about things, do any of you find that? When I actually, you know, talk about things and, and, and talk about them rationally uh, and talk about them honestly, this is what I'm feeling then suddenly it frees up my mind to get other ideas. And between the two broadcasts, I came up with the answers that I needed. I'm pretty sure I have anyway. So in terms of this gift giving thing, people, a couple of things that we want to remember, right? Get your head straight. It's not about the amount of money you spend. Um, Doug, has a thing about people spending money for Christmas and birthday presents, okay? He hates it, absolutely hates it. So 
he spends, if he spends at all, he spends very little, and it's normally a dollar store thing. Uh, and the other thing is he doesn't expect anything, and he, you know, he literally doesn't expect anything. So it's interesting to me. But he loves to come for dinner. Um, to him, that is a gift. He loves to come and talk the night away. To him, that is a gift. You see, that is more important to him than something that I have bought for him. Make sense? And so I want you to think about that. Marnie. Now, Marnie is not somebody that is um, short of money. I, I word, word it that way. And do you know what she gave me for Christmas last year? Oh, I think I've just finished it. Hang on a second. Pretty sure I've just finished it. Yeah, I have. She gave me a bottle this big and this wide of pure honey. You know, made from some friends of hers have got a, a, a honey farm. And it was literally, I and mean, it was the greatest honey, I have to tell you. It really was wonderful. So did she spend a whole lot of money on it? No. But she knows that honey is healthy for me. She knows that I enjoy honey and I use it uh, in my bread and so forth. And so to me, that was awesome. And by the way, I just found her Christmas present when I was unpacking. I've got to tell her. <laughs> you know, I just found the bag and I went, oh, that was Martin's Christmas present. Um, but would she have worried if I didn't give her one? No, it's not about that for us, right? So Bernice is saying it does make sense. With my best friends, I'd rather spend time with them and not expect a present. Anything they give us is a cherry on top. As long as they talk to me or message me, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, Yvonne asked me, you know, Yvonne and I um, came up with the reality that, you know, please don't waste money on stuff I, I don't want. Let's talk about what I do want. You know, we Yvonne and I know each other well enough that every year she asks me what I'd like for my birthday or Christmas, and I ask her what she'd like, and then we get it. Now, we may add to it, but the number one thing is what would you like? And I asked her uh, this year for my birthday. <laughs> to spend less than 20 bucks to buy me that slashing tool that you use on bread. I know there's a fancy name for it. Lame, I think. Lame? Or lame? I think it's lame um, because it's from the French. But, you know, it's just like it's less than 20 bucks. And it's like, yes, please, that's what I want. And I even gave her the link how to get it. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, and Becca's saying meaningful gifts are the best. So again, a chalkboard, you know, with their favorite color is going to be well received by almost everybody. It is now dry, nearly. I wonder if I can write on it yet. And if I mess it up, you know it's done in real time, so that I'm okay with it. Because I will just paint over it if I can find the pen, which you all know is here. All right. Okay, guys, where did you hide it? Not there, not there, not there. And not there. Huh. Get another one out of the box now. Bess, what did I do with it? Oh, I put it in here, didn't I? Why didn't you remind me? What is Sharon saying? Jerry says for Christmas he's giving me a pink camouflage hoodie. He's trying to turn me into a country girl. Isn't that so cute, right? And Kez is saying my mom wrote on her Facebook shop page that some people think homemade gifts are rubbish, but forget how much time and effort goes into the planning of what they're making and buying supplies and making the gifts. I quite agree. Uh, all right, so here we go. Let's do this. So what should we make this into a shopping list, right?
and then we should have some query things, right? So, you know, and just have the have the pen with it. I would even probably uh, put some sticky tape here or something, you know. But now then, the question you're all going to have yourself, but does it rub off? Let's see. Probably not even dry yet, but let's get it off here. Not with just that, but will it come off when it's wet? We also know it's not even dry yet. Never mind anything. Else. Where's my... There we go. So to me, this is all about, and if you know that you're going to need a wet cloth to get rid of it, make sure you tell the person that. <laughs> and now you've got that ghosting that, uh, who was it was talking about that? Somebody was talking about that. So we know that it sort of comes off, but you can still see it. Can you see that what they were talking about there? The white comes off, but there's still some stuff there. So what would we use? What did I say? I think I had the answer. Ah, I know what I would use. I would use some rubbing alcohol, or if you happen to have um, hand sanitizer, that should do it as well, just because of what's in there. No, hand sanitizer doesn't do it. Yeah, interesting. So, you know I will find the answer to that, and I will let you know. But basically, you could write, how many of you going, it's gone, Sal? So. Yeah, but if you look really carefully, <laughs> and that's what they were saying. So I'll do some more experiments on that and find out what takes it up. But quite honestly, if you had it and you were using it, you just right over the top of it. Vinegar. Thank you. Yes, she did say that. All right, I've got vinegar. So let's try that. You see, that's what I love about teamwork. <laughs> My two brain cells don't remember somebody else's will. Yeah, and another coat might help, but I'm trying to just show you in real time, right? By the way, have I failed? How many people would go, oh, that doesn't work? And it's like, no, just we haven't found out how to get rid of it yet. Hmm? It's taking the paint off. It's, it probably isn't properly dry yet either. But I will keep investigating that. So, but to me, could I write over the top of that? Absolutely, no problem at all. And so, but I will keep trying it for you. You see, it's still not dry yet, and that might be part of the problem. So I will try it on the upside down thing and give you some feedback on that. So you love the experiments. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, because this is all about life. You see, that's what I want you to understand. Can you cope with the fact that I did this and it didn't go perfectly? Or did you just go, oh, look at that, it doesn't even work? You know, that is what I'm trying to see. To me, that isn't that it failed. I just haven't got the right stuff yet to get that working. And when I find out what it is, I will throw some in or put a note in there or stick it on the back and goes, you know, the best way if you... It will leave some ghosting. If you don't like that, then use this. It's another puzzle that needs to be solved. Yes. And you know I love to solve puzzles, right? That's probably who I am. So I'm hoping that you have, I don't think I should leave vinegar on this worktop somehow. A um, couple of things. Make sure that you think simple. Don't make your presence too complicated and start with them now because they're going to take time. And I would say because you don't know if you're going to have even less money come Christmas or Thanksgiving. or So I would work out what birthdays have you got coming up in the fall um, and starting into winter and start buying those presents every month now. Does that make sense? That would be smart thinking. And... What I also would say to you is 
We're going to keep giving you different ideas. Some you're going to like and some you're not. That's fine. It's not, a, it's not the thing. I am hoping that because we keep giving you the ideas, somewhere along the line, you're going to go, I didn't like the other ones, but this one I like. Right? So, and they will all be things that you can buy pretty cheaply and do something with. Um, if you remember, I am adding to my list. I So far, I've got vanilla extract, and now I've got a blackboard thing. So now I will start having boxes. Um, and I say boxes. They might even just be Safeway bags into which, and I will label them. And as I make things, I will put them into the different bags. All right? So by the time we get to December, I will have enough basic stuff in there that, you know, I can then add the cheese or whatever to it and, and, and really make, you know, make the box pretty. Kez says that when I buy gifts, I can't afford expensive, so I make sure to remember things they said they liked. Yes, like their favorite color, their favorite animal, and I include that in the gift, and my family appreciates the thought that goes into it. That is exactly the point. Make it simple and thoughtful. Simple and thoughtful. So this would be simple, practical, and if it's the right color, thoughtful. Make sense? If, you know, if you made these and you actually you know, gave the pen, it's simple, thoughtful, very practical. I can't think of anybody that wouldn't use want it, quite honestly. And we know it came off here really easily. So maybe there's two coats that you need. So I want to just finish by giving you a little exercise. And I did this at the lunchtime broadcast, and I'm going to be doing it on every broadcast. I'm going to give you a headline from the newspapers or the media, and I want you to, to have the reaction all right, um, that you have, so we can then process it, all right? So I'm going to give you the headline. I want you to go, wow, what do I feel when I hear that? You know, do you feel angry? Do you feel scared? Do you feel whatever? And then we're going to work with that. So you probably, different people will have different reactions. So are you ready? All right, yes, uh, Becca's saying, you know, it would be you know, great for putting buttons in or dried beans or anything like that, right? And, you know, I, I would probably also, if you feel like it, you know, make hot chocolate mix in it. You know, put hot chocolate and, and some um, skim milk powder and then tie a candy cane to it. Make a lovely gift. Or an instant soup, you know, with, with all the bits for an instant soup, you know, some beans, some barley and so forth. And, you know, lots of creative ideas. All right, here's the headline. Are you ready? Be ready, because this one is pretty amazing. We did an interesting one at lunchtime, but how about this one? The looming evictions may soon make 28 million people homeless. All right, this is because the stimulus package is stopping 28 million people, I believe in the States, um, will be homeless by the end of September. What is your mental reaction to that news? Let's get honest here and let's do it. Okay, Bernice, good to see you. Thank you for being here. And you know, catch this on the replay, please, uh, Bernice, because it'll help you. Jody's going, I'm angry, I feel fear and helplessness. Good, thank you, Jody. That's what I need to hear, that you, know, that you can feel those. All right, anybody else? You see, part of, the, uh, part of this whole thing about coping is to be able to recognize what happens to you when you hear something like that. And different people will have different reactions based on whatever your life is. And so I get to carry on just so that you understand the process. The first thing is... 
for Jody. Jody, does being angry change the facts? Does you being fearful change the facts? And I am coming back to the helplessness in, in a moment, if that's okay. Um, Becca is saying confusion. Like, how is that even possible? Well, if they're not getting the stimulus package and they're out of the job, how are they going to pay their rent? And if they can't pay the rent, they'll be evicted. Ah, and Bernice, who apparently didn't go, <laughs> now she's going, said, you know, we're already preparing for it. Good. So what I want you to do is to understand this is a reality that's coming to your neighborhood soon, within the next month. And so Jody's saying, it renders me useless. I can't function when consumed by anger. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, it doesn't help the person who's homeless. So now then, I want to address the subject of helplessness, Jody, because I know you pretty well. And so first of all, can we change it? No, unless they come up with another stimulus and I can't make anything happen in the States. Can you stop it? I don't know whether even a change in government, it's going to be in December, uh, November, and it won't happen until January. That's too late. So that's not going to stop it. So, but are we helpless? That's what I want you to think about. Are we really helpless? So what I'd like you to do for a second before we close this broadcast is to think, if you know it's happening and it's going to be happening within the next six weeks, what can you do? You know, the, the old, old adage is to think globally, but act locally. So what do you know is going to happen? We're going to have 28 me million people without homes. What can you do? If they haven't got homes, are they likely to also be hungry as well as homeless? So let's see what you can come up with. Sharon saying, my first reaction is anger. And then I thought about how can they do that? And then I thought about the business side of it. They're not in business to give away money, but maybe they will create a program to help them. Yeah. But what happens if them is you? What happens if them is your sister or brother? All right. So Jody is now starting to use that other side of her brain, the problem solving side and saying, I could gather resources for donations and I can bake bread. Yeah, and you cook really well as well. Um, Becca's saying, I want to know why it's happening or even honestly if we can trust any source. So you, the thing is this. Um, it's happening because people won't be able to pay their rent. If they're out of a job and there is no stimulus, how, how are they going to pay for the rent? They haven't got savings. And by the way, I, you know me, I, I did a bit of extra digging. Would you like to know which states are going to be most severely hit? Because, you know, I did a bit of research on this. Oops. Um, the, I'm going to just read to you the ones that are going to be most severely hit. In other words, over 50% of the people who rent homes will be affected. That would be 51% in Florida. 51% of the people who rent in Florida could be in big trouble. In Texas, it could be 48. Okay. Uh, MS, that's Minnesota. <laughs> Forgive me. You know, I'm not, I'm not from those parts. Okay. In Minnesota, 55% of the renters will have a problem. In Louisiana, 50% will have a problem. In Tennessee, and uh, no, TN is Tennessee, I think. Yep. In Tennessee, 58%, that's nearly 60% of the people who rent will be in trouble. Mississippi is MS. Thank you for that. Um, I, and forgive me for not being up with these uh, abbreviations. West Virginia, 59%. 59% in West Virginia. You're probably not surprised now that you think about it. Um, there are a lot of them in the 40s, 
And let me see who is the least, funny enough, Vermont is one of the least affected ones with only 22%. And I'm just trying to see if there's anybody else other than Vermont that's in the 20s. Yes, Massachusetts is only 27%. And Washington State is only, 20, uh, only 28%, but it is... Utah is 29%. So, but everybody is affected. Every single um, state is affected. So my question to you is, instead of asking why, and that, that you know, we shouldn't allow that to happen and get angry and all the rest of it, take it as fact it's going to happen. And my question to you is, what are you going to do about it? Kez is saying, I felt sad, worried that they will have to sleep out in the freezing cold. And if they have pets, to give them to a shelter, can donate to a charity, or even give food to a food bank. We can, if you know how, do things like knit blankets, yes, and, and to, um, hats and gloves, all those sort of things. If you've got three sleeping bags hidden away in your back closet, consider donating two of them. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. If you have got, if you have got, um, you know, four anoraks because you like to change the colors, you know, you may want to think about donating a couple. Winter is coming. And I agree that there are going to be an awful lot of people homeless and cold and hungry. And so, therefore, what I'm saying to you is, don't get tied into the emotion of it's not fair and it shouldn't be happening and da-da-da-da. You know, you can't just keep printing money either, right? So I explained this in a, a previous broadcast, right? But you do understand if you just keep printing money, it devalues all the money that's already out there. If they're 10 bucks out in, in the whole of the U.S. at the moment and they print another 10 it means that the 10 bucks that was there originally now is valued at five. That is the problem. And so you understand that these things are not about what shouldn't happen. It's about what is going to happen unless you know, a couple of miracles happen along the way. And we can hope for that. But what I would like you to do as thoughtful, caring, kind people is start, I'm going to be talking, for example, to my community. We're having a community get together, socially distant, um, on Wednesday. And I will start saying, who do we know um, in, in this community here of there are about 100 uh, units here? And who do we know in our community that you know, could end up in big trouble if um, they have been laid off work because of this? And so... And what are we going to do to help them, you know, to help them eat, to help them, uh, you know, do whatever. We might not be able to give them money, but we might be able to do other things to help them. And that is, you know, I'm also looking at some people will need to think very hard and go, you know, with all due respect, I've got a second bedroom and we don't use it. I use it as a storeroom, but it does have a bed in it. And I would be prepared to let somebody into my house and keep them warm for the winter. And so to me, um, you know, it's very important that we start thinking about that. I've already said to the people close to me, you know, if times get really tough, I would, you know, Quite honestly, I can fit another two people in my house without any problem, except my ego and my need for peace and quiet. And so to me, I look at it and go, what could you do? Not what you want to do. That's a whole different story. What could you do? And so I look at it and go, there are going to be a lot of people hurting really badly. And I challenge you to not just think of yourself. For those of you who are cooking, you know, and, and, and doing things like that, um, think about, you know, you may be able to help feed somebody 
And it doesn't have to be magical stuff. It might be a guy that's living uh, around the corner from you and he's living by the dumpsters. You might want to keep checking on the dumpster area to see if anybody is living there. And if you find somebody living there, you might want to just go there occasionally and hand over some food. Right. And Jody's saying soup can feed a lot of people on a budget. And that's actually, Jody, what I thought I would do as the um, coping on a limited budget subject next week is to show people how I make my soup um, twice a week. And when I say how I make mine, I want to show you that you can make a really good nutritious soup to not only feed you and your family, but maybe somebody else's as well. And you can basically do it almost from leftovers. And I thought if I can show you how I do mine and how you do yours is up to you, but I want to show you that I literally um, have started being much more frugal about what I throw away. <laughs> and that's what I want to show you. You know, I keep a bag in my freezer of soup bits, bits, right? And they are things that I normally would have thrown away, but I am not throwing them away. I'm freezing them, and twice a week I'm using them to make soup. And yes, that's a very good point, Becca. Hence the whole idea of a soup kitchen, right? You make a good nutritious soup. People just on the broth alone will be uh, keep them warm and keep them, you know, with the basic needs. If it happens to have vegetables and a little piece of meat here and there, you are basically supplying quite uh, a meal. And not only that, I want to show you um, what I do with my soup all week. All right. Because I want you to see that if you do this right, you could basically feed people all the time, ongoing. And I'm certain that some of you will want to do that in your neighborhood. So I would also, if I were you and a churchgoer, I would probably start talking to your local church, whoever it is that you support, and say to them, I think winter is coming. In fact, I know it is, and I believe that a lot of people are going to be homeless. Um, I might not be able to come to church all the time, but I want you to know I am willing to help. You know, I, I cannot, maybe I cannot get to church, but I am willing to cook things and, and if somebody can pick them up. I am willing to donate clothes if somebody can pick them up. You know, maybe you can't do that. You know, whatever it is, if you tell them that you are willing to do that, maybe as, as somebody said, you know, you want to let the local pound know that I can take in a puppy if you need me to, all right? I am prepared to, to take in a small dog if it ends up on the street because the, its owners can't afford to keep it anymore. And Becca is saying, I wonder if we will see a lot more soup kitchens in the bigger cities, not just in the secluded areas. I think we'll have to. I absolutely think we will have to. And I would like to see us, those of us who care about other people, start thinking about you know, maybe you become the soup kitchen for your local area. Yeah. And Jody's saying, I can bake many loaves of bread for the soup suppers. Yes, if the church can pick them up. Yeah. And I'm pretty certain that if you speak to your local Safeway or whatever grocery you, you, you deal with and let them know that's what you're doing, they will probably donate the flour, Jody. Get, get Lionel to talk to them and say, you know, we know winter's coming and we know a lot of people are going to be homeless. We want to start baking bread and give it to the church. You know, is there any way? Or, quite honestly, maybe the food banks will give you the flowers so you can do that. Or the church will help you do that. I am certain the thing is to start talking about it, Jody, because when you start talking about it, people get ideas. Right? It's when we just get scared and angry and it's not fair and da, 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 nothing happens. But, you know, if you already know it's coming 
And by the way, what if you get all geared up to do this and it doesn't happen? I don't know about you, but I'd be very happy about that. So I'm going to carry on. Yeah, it's taken me quite a while to learn how to bake bread. And this is very nutritious, multi-grain, flaxseed honey sourdough. And how many of you know, with all those good things in it, that in itself is a pretty, um, <laughs> why do we would do that? <laughs> See if it's done, right? Um, but, you know, that in itself, with, with a bowl of soup and a couple of slices of this would be sustainable for somebody. Exactly. Jody is saying, and this is where our coping mechanism comes in, sweeping these realities under the rug solves nothing. At least have a conversation and make a plan. And then Kez is saying, you and your neighbors could make hampers. You can use dried beans in a soup. They're very cheap to buy, and you can buy them in Indian stores and bulk it. In jail. I've got, uh, actually, Kez, I know that you do it in Australia, but, you know, hang on a second, I can reach that part. I always keep uh, split peas. And pearl barley, um, you know, and I've got another one like this with uh, mixed vegetables that are dry, dehydrated. Okay, for that very reason. Never know when you're going to need it. You know, if there's an earthquake or something, I always like to have something like this that I could make soups out of if I needed to. And so the point is when you're buying groceries this month, you might want to think, let me add something I can make soups with if needed. All right. The main thing is if it's dehydrated like this, it will last forever. You're not going to waste anything. But I make my soup that lasts me all week and feeds me all week <laughs> out of bits that normally I would throw away. That is the amazing thing. One more tip before I go. Um, if you can, buy bulk ramen noodles. That's what I'm doing. I'm buying ramen noodles uh, by the, the flat. And the reason is when you buy them like this, they're about a buck each in Canadian. But you make this and you throw in some vegetables and a little bit of meat here and there. You've got both the soup and a meal. And so to me, um, this is my second flat that I've got ready. And, you know, I'm trying to make sure. And, you know, I know that these the ramen noodle isn't the healthiest thing you can eat. But, you know, I don't necessarily use the seasoning stuff in it. Uh, I use my own stuff that I use, but, you know, it's like, boy, if I needed to feed the, you know, the guy that walks around the property every now and then, I could hack him one of these and know that he's going to have something to eat. Um, Kez is saying, do shopping malls in the USA and Canada have food? In what way, Kez? Like in the supermarket, or do they have food so people can go there and be warm and have a meal? You see, that's the other thing I would expect um, will need to happen. Okay, so Kez is saying donation bins, one shopping center near where I live does, and occasionally I put something in it. Yes. So if your grocery store has a food bank type thing, you know, buy... Even if you bought one or two of these, not not whole flats, but one or two, and just tuck them in on your way by, you did something to help the situation, right? If you don't want to cook it and do anything with it, then donate it so somebody else can. Yes, a donation bin. Yes, it definitely ours does, and I'm pretty certain most do. And it'll be more important than ever. And what to throw in there? Tinned anything or dried anything. In other words, you know, pasta and 
like one of these and a, and a bottle of pasta sauce, great idea. Or, or you know, a package of macaroni if you can afford that, and and a, a thing of pasta sauce. You know, it's going to feed. So, I am holding us responsible to make the difference. Let's not be angry about it. Let's not be frustrated about it. I am asking you to not only do something about it to be ready, be prepared, not scared, but also talk to your people about it. Because if all of you talk to all of your friends about it and say, come on, let's do something, and then you challenge them to talk to all their friends about it, and then we can make a big difference. Um, yeah, Kes is saying female hygiene items would be good to add to the donation bin. Kes, I don't know if you saw it, but a couple of weeks ago, I showed everybody how to make reusable hygiene products because of this sort of thing is going to be happening. And I don't know about you, I would rather, um, you know, have people have something that they can wash out and reuse rather than something that's just disposable and you're never going to be able to use it again. So that is a thought. For those of you who are sewers or anything else like that, um, if you weren't there for that broadcast, I will try and hunt down the exact place on the broadcast where we talked about that and uh, send you the link. Just contact me at dearmamasal at gmail.com and I'll hunt down the place so that you can see. I showed you what is available, but I also showed you the ones that I make and why I made them that way. <laughs> and they work. It is amazing. I'm going, I really don't think I could buy uh, the disposable ones again. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> I've got exactly what I needed. And why? I designed it. I saw what was out there. I tried them all out. And then I said, okay, now then, with that information, what do I think needs to change? And I designed my own. And that's what I shared on a broadcast. So this is Dear Mama Sal saying to you that, you know, we can cope with this. We can cope with what is coming if we stay in reality. We can cope if we can keep our heads straight. And we can cope. I really believe that if we can see what is coming and be prepared to help others. Isabel, I don't think I've ever heard you so quiet. I hope you're okay. I've got to ask that question because I, I don't think I've seen a broadcast where you've been there where you, you have been that quiet. And then Kez is saying you can make bigger ones and turn them into nappies. Yeah, exactly. So this is the whole thing. Life I, I think the younger generation are going to suffer the most because they have never, ever really had to battle for anything. And my generation is a lot luckier because we, we've had it pretty good. But, you know, our parents came out of the war years, so they taught us a lot about how to do things and not waste things. So like everything else, I love you dearly. Remember to look after one another. But you know, you cannot help other people if you haven't got your head on straight, if you are not thinking straight, if you are letting the fear get to you. The people who will survive this well are the people who keep saying, it is what it is now, what am I gonna do? Like Jody did. The oven size doesn't work, it is what it is onwards. But let me try and save somebody else the problem that I've got and then she found out in doing that. Quite honestly, if Jody hadn't decided to do that check, she wouldn't have got the oven. That's a funny thing. If she hadn't tried to protect other people. So, Jody, I wish you lots of fun with your new freezer. And Jody, I know you're a short ass, you know, and I'm five foot seven. I think you're five foot diddly. Um, but I do recommend keep your things, if you haven't got really nice containers and stuff, keep your things in the freezer in Safeway bags. You only have to lean halfway into a freezer to get to it. And I write what's in it on the handle of the, of the um, Safeway bag. Does that help you at all? <laughs> yeah, you're a smurf. That's right. That's the right one. So, people, if you've enjoyed today's broadcast, please leave notes below and encourage other people to listen to it. 
And if you found anything that was helpful that you think somebody else may get value of, please make sure you share um, the links for other people to use. And let us know. I've asked this and I'm going to continue to ask. I want to know what you are hearing out on the street. When I say that, I want to know what are people worried about? What are they saying? You know, I'm really scared about this or whatever, because I want to start addressing those topics. I am going to do everything within my power over the course of the next year to help as many people as possible cope. And I'm going to do it with your help. Because unless I really understand what is happening in your community, I might not be addressing that. So if you're hearing, getting emails from people saying, I'm really scared about what's going to happen about blah, 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 let me know. Or you're going, Sal, but what will happen if, right? If you send me those questions, and I will probably put a survey out so you can have somewhere where you can go and add those um, into a database for me. But to me, if I know what it is that people are worried about, then I can design the broadcast to address those things. I will definitely be doing three broadcasts a week about coping. And the first one will be to be coping with ourselves in, in, in terms of um, – you know, my mind's gone. <laughs> And hang on, I know where I can find that. Just hold on one second, because I'm just going to laugh at myself here, because I close it, right? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. <laughs> I just did this, spent the afternoon working on how we're going to do this. And then, here we go. So we will do um, the Friday lunchtime one. Right, we'll be dealing with feelings. So I want to know what people are feeling so that I can address those. Friday evening, we'll be talking about how to cope with less money. And then Sundays, I will be discussing how to cope with the stress. And that will be the self-care of which you talk about. So we're going to do this. And I'm doing this not just to help you, but hopefully to help the people you know. So that if I can help you learn and understand, and, and how do you answer this when somebody says this? If I can help you help other people, do you understand the ripple effect? Because if we can teach all those people, then they can help other people. And we're going to need to help one another big time. This is dear Mama Sal saying thank you for your time. Time is very precious to me. And it's great to see so many of you here. Keep thinking about those incredible gifts that the rich people gave and go, wow. This is dear Mama Sal saying, we'll see you on Sunday and bye-bye for now.